Welcome to part four of the Eddie Smock sewing tutorial. We are going to begin by finishing the neckline. The neckline is finished using the French bias binding method. You will begin by measuring a piece of bias binding the same length as the neckline plus one inch. Once your bias binding is cut to length, you will fold in each end by a half an inch and press. Once pressed, you will refold the bias binding on the center fold and align the end of the bias binding with the center front edge of the placket and the raw edge of the bias tape will be lined up with the raw edge of the neckline. You will pin it in place along the entire neckline. Once pinned, you will sew the, the bias binding to the neckline using a scant 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that, now that the bias binding has been sewn to the neckline, you will trim the seam allowance down to a quarter inch. And then you will press the bias binding and the seam allowance away from the garment. Once the bias binding has been pressed away from the garment, you will understitch the bias binding to the seam allowance. Then you will press the bias binding towards the wrong side of the garment, making sure that you don't see any of the bias binding. Pin or clip the bias binding in place making sure that the corner of the bias binding at the placket is tucked in. Once the bias binding is in place, you can top stitch the bias binding to the neckline. Now your neckline is complete. Now to finish the hem. The hem is finished in the same manner as the neckline. Before you apply the bias binding to the hem, you want to make sure the front two plackets are the same length. To determine the length of the bias binding, the first thing I'm going to do is fold in the end by half of an inch and press it in place. Then I will begin to pin the bias binding to the hem of the garment in the same fashion as I did on the neckline. When you get to the corner points at the, at the side panel, I will slightly curve the bias binding around the points to make a smooth edge. Once you reach the other side of the button placket, you can trim the bias binding with an additional one, half an inch overhang. Fold this overhang in towards the wrong side of the bias binding so that it is flush with the button placket. Now you can sew the bias binding to the hem using a scant 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once the bias binding has been sewn in place, you will trim the seam allowance as you did before with the neckline. At this point though, you will make sure to trim the corner points of the side panels. Once trimmed, 
you will press the bias binding and the seam allowance away from the garment and understitch the bias binding to the seam allowance. Once the understitching is complete, you will press the bias binding towards the wrong side of the garment, making sure no bias binding is visible. Then, if needed, you can pin or clip the bias binding in place, making sure that the corners are tucked in, and then you will top stitch the bias binding to the garment to complete the hem. Now to insert the buttonholes and the buttons. Begin by marking the placement of your buttonholes along your button placket, and then use your preferred method for inserting your buttonholes. Once the buttonholes have been inserted, then hand sew or use your sewing machine to attach your buttons. Now, you will insert the side ties into the garment by threading the tie through the holes created in the side panel seams. You will thread the side tie in through the hole in the front and then out through the hole in the back. You can use the side ties to cinch in the waist your desired amount. And now your eddy smock is complete. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions.